to build your own home can be a real journey. It's an opportunity to experience something new and learn some incredible life skills along the way. And that's exactly what this next couple discovered when they built their very own tiny house on wheels. Hi Claire, how are you? I'm good, good morning. Great to meet you. G'day Tim, how's it going mate? Good to Bryce, yeah, very good. It is a pleasure to meet you both and I am so excited to see this beautiful home that you've built. Yeah, it's been a few years in the making but we've been in here a while now and uh, yeah, we're really, really happy with it. So what was it that inspired you to build a tiny house? I was kind of the holdout. I was a bit unsure about like a tall guy in a, in a small dwelling. One day, Claire got me into a car, uh, drove me to a friend's tiny house. They showed us around and I realized that it was an incredibly livable space. So after that, we just, I just came away fizzing. Excellent. So Claire, it really sounds like you were the instigator behind this. What was it that made you fall in love with the idea of building a tiny house? That also at the time we were like living here and there and everywhere and it was very attractive to be able to just like build something of our own and also be creative with the build and build it ourselves as well. So this was a DIY build, what was that process like for you? It was definitely a learning curve, I mean obviously we're not builders ourselves. So this whole place has been built with I guess like YouTube videos. But yeah, thankfully we have quite a few builders who are friends. We did get uh, one of Claire's friends to help us with foundations for the, for the deck here and um, we got a friend to come help us with the roof. But other than that, uh, yeah, it's all, it's all us. Now I've got lots of questions about the house, but first we cannot ignore this parking spot. These are probably the most spectacular views that I've ever seen from a tiny house parking spot. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty much luck. My parents were um, about six years ago just looking for a property. The real estate agent brought them here. They walked onto this platform and they were just like, oh my God, this is it. And yeah, it's, and it's really handy too, having the, um, the family really close and stuff. It's really nice, yeah. And you're doing a lot with the land here as well. I see you've planted some very beautiful gardens. I just really, really keen on that and definitely wanted to plant lots of natives and also do an epic garden and it's just awesome. Fantastic, because both of you are quite interested in sustainability and reforestation and permaculture, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, we are. Um, I think it's just in my blood, like my parents were really keen conservationists. I think you just can't really help but love it and just be involved. And with me, I've always been interested in the kind of environmental side. I do more of the, I guess, you could say the grunt work, the digging and things, and then Claire will do, you know, the, the planting out and the... I'm yeah, more the dreamer yeah. <laughs> than Tim actually does it. Good combination, yeah. <laughs> well, you can see that a lot of dreaming has gone into making this space a reality. So when it comes to the house, first of all, what size is it? It's 7.2 metres long uh, by 2.9 metres wide. And can you tell me about the design of the home? It's all steel frame. So what we did was whip up a design on uh, SketchUp and basically, yeah, just where all the windows and doors were and get the shell. We uh, sent that to the steel manufacturer guys and uh, they produced it for us. And so they sent us about six panels and then, yeah, it was really easy to whip up. The, uh, the color choices, so yes, the green and the black, we didn't want to impact other people looking at us in the bay. We didn't want like this bright white or yellow one. You well, know? I did. <laughs> she did. But had to definitely be, you wanted know, a bright we yellow house. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, <laughs> we, we didn't want to, you know, advertise to the world that, you know, we're out on this amazing hippie and things like that. So, um, yeah, we're just conscious about people looking at us as well. So yeah. that's why this color choice as well. We think it works, you know, pretty well. It is nice to keep things tucked subtly into the landscape mm. and I'm glad that you at least won one argument because <laughs> she got the tiny house, you got the colour choice, <laughs> yeah. everybody wins, right? Yeah, exactly. And with this home, you can see that you've done a lot of other things to sort of really beautifully embed it into the landscape. I see you've got an outdoor hot tub there and I even saw a sneaky outdoor shower down there and composting toilet with probably the coolest view in the world. I guess these little touches just to make it more homely and uh, I guess just to make it easier to live. Having an outdoor bath there, gas lit underneath um, and then watching the sun go down behind the mountains is like, you know, 
great. <laughs> Can't get much better, right? So, yeah. so uh, yeah, we enjoy that, especially in the in the spring and autumn months. Yeah, in yeah. winter yeah. and things. So that's that's really great. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, we've got a nice little track down to the sea down there, which we go swimming. And so on the way up, we've uh, installed a little shower there, so we can rinse off and yeah. things like that. And it looks like you've built a good amount of storage onto the front of the trailer there too. Yeah, we have. So we definitely needed like an outdoor shed. We've got our hot water cylinder out there and our washing machine and like a lot of excess tools that we haven't really found a home for yet as well. Well, this place just looks absolutely brilliant and I cannot wait to see what you've done on the inside. Can we take a look? Come yeah. on in. After you. Oh, I absolutely love what you have done in here. This place is just packed full of character, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we wanted to create quite a, a warm feel with all the all the wood and things like that. And got, obviously, Claire's pot plants and things coming down the walls and stuff. So, yeah, we've kind of made it really, I guess, homely for us. Absolutely, especially with features like this branch. It almost has a treehouse vibe in here, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, this branch kind of has a special story. Um, this came from a family batch that we have up the coast. And uh, this is a puriri tree, and it was dying. I guess it's a bit of the, the family or the family history kind of in the house, the imbued in the house. So it's quite important to us. Being able to include things like that in your house that have that family history just immediately helps to make the home so much more special. Yeah, and I mean, that is kind of built in all through this, this amazing home. Um, we've got our cabinetry, which is actually recycled timber from tabletops. Our family used to own a cafe. And uh, when they redid the tables, uh, we got the timber. Amazing. And then over here we have your lounge, and this is a huge lounge for a tiny house, isn't it? We definitely wanted like enough space that you could comfortably have a good group of people over. This area actually can sleep three people, as well as then it converts into a double bed. We've got a projector and a screen there, so uh, yeah, when it converts into the double bed, you can kind of just know. Relax back and, and watch movies at night and stuff, and it's really, really great. Having that space that you can just completely relax in in a home is just so important. Absolutely. And you've been so clever with how you've built it as well. I see you've even slanted the wood to help give your legs more space. Yeah, that was um, credit to YouTube. Yeah, it can be helpful old YouTube, can't it? <laughs> yep. I've also got a bit of a stash for my kind of yoga gear as well. Excellent. What we had seen on, again, YouTube, there was a table that had two different functions. So this one has about three or four functions. It um, transforms into the bed, it, it makes a dining table, it makes a coffee table, and it also makes a desk for me when I'm working from home. So we've, we've designed this for multiple things um, so it can adapt to, I guess, whatever occasion that we throw at it. And it looks like you've also managed to get a lot of storage in here. Yeah, each of these lift up so we can chuck all our tramping gear under there, we've got bike gear and home rowing gear, all sorts. It's excellent. All the essentials. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what do we have up here? Upstairs is our guest loft, which we very stoked to have. It's still open to the house, but it is also like a little private space for them as well. Having a loft like that, which is a dedicated space for visitors and means you don't have to transform and lose your lounge when people come over is just such a nice feature. But it's also nice because it gives you a second sort of private space if you need it as well. Yeah, it is actually quite fun to go up there. I guess it does feel like a different space. We've got a bookcase up there. We can pop up there and read. It's quite nice. And then behind us here, we have your kitchen. And I absolutely love the timber that you've used in here. Yeah, so most of our hardwood timber, our, um, obviously the bench top, the rafters and things like that, this is all locally sourced from a, uh, a mill just down the road. And even though, you know, you can see it's had a bit of use now, we've got a few, uh, few pot stains and things like that, it's, uh, yeah, we, we really love it how it's uh, come out. It's one of the things about timber benches, isn't it? That when you first put them in, they're beautiful and completely unscathed and you just want to keep them and be really precious about them. And then you get that first ding and it's like, oh my gosh, yeah. what have I done? <laughs> but then you get a thousand dings and it just looks fantastic again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The first time, I mean, that this was a classic example with the, uh, the grater on the bench there. Um, that was, for me, devastating. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but after that, there's been a few other scrapes and uh, stains and things like that. And uh, now it's getting a bit more character. And I really like the way that you've designed this kitchen as well. There's lots of prep area and it just looks very practical. We definitely, when we were planning it, we thought about the areas that we would spend the most time in. And you do spend a lot of hours in the kitchen. And at the time we were kind of living 
I guess in a caravan but also just prior to that we'd been living in kind of like a commercial kitchen area <laughs> um, not just in the kitchen and just figuring out how things flow was a big part of the design process for this kitchen I'm really happy with how it turned out I like the way that you've left the beams on the end wall exposed so that you can add a little bit of storage there too yeah, that was a throwback to my family house. Mum and Dad, they cleared some of the walls, but a lot of them were just exposed, and we used them for storage all the time. And, yeah, it seemed like a good use of space. And all the essential appliances in here as well? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, fridge, toaster, blender, everything we need. Uh, oven, there's literally nothing lim limiting us compared to, like, a normal conventional house. And through that door there must be your bathroom. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice little space in there in its own right. Um, let's go have a look. Let's have a look, yeah. Again, this is really nice. You've managed to fit a great size shower in here. Yeah, I mean, the shower size is pretty much like a normal shower. We wanted, you know, a usable bathroom, so we tried to standardise all these areas as much as we could. And you've got the composting toilet there as well? Absolutely, it, uh, yeah, it works really well. Got a bit of land to do the composting with, and works really well with our lifestyle. I think composting toilets always make sense, but when you're on a bit of land, they make a lot of sense because not only is the compost really useful in the gardens and surroundings, but also just the raw materials for the composting toilet are all around you. Yeah, so we've obviously got all this carbon around us and because we're doing all this landscaping all the time, so we've got to put it somewhere, so we might as well make you know amazingly nutrient-rich compost with it. We don't tend to put it on our vegetables, but we put it around our like fruit trees and other trees and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the sleeping loft is upstairs. Yeah. Cool. We'll, uh, go have a look now. Let's check it out. Especially with this branch here, it really does feel like you're climbing into a treehouse. Yeah, I love those stairs. We spent a lot of time talking about what we, what sort of style of stair we wanted, whether we wanted like a ladder, safe space, or we wanted some easy stairs that we could just stand on up. We got a lot of advice from people to make it easy as possible. And so I think that's a good medium between not taking up too much space. Like you can kind of climb up and down them just with one hand. I like what you've done with the hanging clothes there as well. And you've also managed to build in quite a lot of storage up here. Yes, we have our wardrobe here, um, mainly my stuff, and it was just really easy to build, very simple. And the way that you've positioned that window there, wow, what a view you get from this loft. Yeah, we actually spent quite a bit of time in the design uh, thinking about our sight lines and where we were, say, lying in bed or sitting on the couch or doing certain things around the tiny house, we, what we could see out there. And uh, yeah, it's, it's worked out really, really well, yeah. Certainly has. The lead light window is another beautiful feature. We sourced them from a local place. This guy we uh, found out had around like 200 of these amazing lead lights. And so, yeah, we bought a couple of them off him and all the sashes and the frames of these windows are all custom made for us. Excellent. And that is a monster spider that you've got behind you too. Yes, this is on my side of the bed. Um, <laughs> she just moved in one day and I've... I was a bit nervous for a while, but I've made friends with her, so it's okay. She pays the rent, she catches the flies and mosquitoes, so uh, that helps us out as well. That's the important thing. So how long have you been living in the house now? So we've been in a, a year and a half. Um, it took us around two years to build from the start of the design process to moving in. Um, it took us that long because we were working full time, so we were just really building this in the weekend. And how are you finding life in the tiny house? I love it. It's so easy. It's a really easy space to live in. It's easy to have visitors. It's really cozy in winter. It's, yeah, great spot. It's lovely. Yeah. Lower our electricity bill, less cleaning, less heating. Yeah, I mean, in terms of, I guess, a footprint for living, it's small. And can I ask about the cost that was involved in building this home? It was cost us about $65,000 and because we built over two years that was actually really handy for us budgeting. It's very steadying actually to have a home of our own. I guess you feel kind of safe and stable having something of ours. And also like having a home for me was kind of like okay it's just a base and then you can go out and do stuff. So to have a really simple home it doesn't need a whole lot of work done to it all the time so I can have more time to do other stuff so I can jump out into the garden and I can grow my plants and socialise and it's just all easy so it's just a really nice easy space to live in. 
that was kind of the the Kiwi dream for us to you know have some roots in this place. So with the build now finished and now you're both happily living in your home, what does the future hold for you now? So we've got a quite an exciting project coming up. Um, so on the 22nd of April of this year, 2022, we are going to be leaving to cycle to the country, New Zealand, for uh, about three months. And uh, along the way, we're going to be visiting a whole lot of environmental groups, volunteering our time with those, along with uh, two other people. And hopefully raising awareness and money for these environmental groups, really, you know, getting into the work, into the mahi, uh, about, um, yeah, just restoring New Zealand's natural environment, which is, yeah, really inspiring for us. Very cool. And can you also tell us about projects that you have going on here on the land and what your plans for the future here are? Yes, we have many, many plans and many, many projects going on. So over the last year, I've just got really, really into growing plants and growing natives. And so I've got a bit of a nursery out the back there that um, is slowly taking over my life and Tim's life as well. Uh, we've also got a great veggie garden further up the road a little bit. And the plan for that is to turn it into kind of a food forest and have it pumping out the veggies all year round. What an amazing goal. Well, unquestionably, you are both living the dream. You have built such a beautiful home. This is an incredible property that you get to take guardianship of. And I'm so excited for all of your adventures in the future. Thank you so much for sharing your home with me. Thank you. Thanks, Russ. My pleasure. Claire and Tim have done such an incredible job with building this home. Together they've created a place which is beautiful, cozy, creative, and just feels like a home. But what I like best of all is that for this couple, this home is really just a springboard. It's a, a place that they can launch themselves into the world and do all of their other incredible projects. And that really is something very special. <laughs>